Hi, and welcome to Learn Informatics. You will um, be able to see here that we are on the first page of Learn Informatics, and this is a guide for those uh, managers or teachers who are going to be overseeing the course to give you a quick overview of what's available. First of all, you need to get your login and log into Learn Informatics with your own credentials. Log in here with mine. And the first splash page that you come to, you will see certain features. At the top, we've got the teacher home page, that's the one you're on at the minute. I've got the pupil view and then the log out button. One of the first things that you ought to do whenever you log in as an administrator of the course is hit the admin button. And this defaults straight to any students that might be pending. As you can see, a student might have tried to sign up here. You need to check the credentials, make sure you know who the student is, and then you can activate their account. If you click on View Active Students, you will then be able to see the students themselves that have already joined the course, and you might be able to edit some of their details and possibly send them a password reset. You can see here that John Newman is the administrator, that would be a teacher already administering the course, and then the other two, Bob Smith and Dave Tusker, they are basic users of the course. So back to the teacher home page. Now on the teacher home page, I have already been into admin, so I now need to set up some groups and the curriculum for those groups. So I'm going to click on class progress. You'll see here that 7x are already created and they have two candidates. I'm now going to create a new label called 7y. I'm going to add 7y and you'll see that a new group has been added. This six letter code is key as that is the one that you will need to give to students in order for them to sign up into the course and they will automatically if they use this code, M-E-R-S-S-T, be signed up into 7Y. Now, I've got 7X here and I want to edit 7X. I can change the group name, providing you haven't already got that group name, and you can change the name of the lead teacher, and you can remove pupils from the group. Underneath is a curriculum planning. When you create a group, all curriculum topics and modules are selected so that students will see everybody. However, it might be that you are thinking that you don't want certain stages to be you don't want certain stages to be accessible to those groups right at the beginning, otherwise it might become a bit overpowering for smaller pupils. So I might want to take off some of the cyber security and just perhaps leave the internet module on there. So I can do that. I um, probably don't want the programming control advanced module, so I can remove that. And perhaps right at the beginning, I don't want to start them looking at spreadsheets or even OneNote. I might just want um, some basic presentation, word processing, email and so forth. They might not have their own devices, so the only stage using my advice device is required, and you might not want them doing any in other than web design, Python, and some code.org. So you can now tailor your curriculum. And when the students log on, these are the only modules and stages that they will see. So I've created a new group. And I've got a group here. And then I'm ready for my candidates to sign up using the six letter code that I will give them. Next, we can see the progress of the students. And some of these features will be looked at 
further down the line. At the moment, only John Newman's logged in. He's only done one task. So we won't look too closely at the progress. However, if we go to the pupil view, this gives you the same view that any learner would have. So if, you, if it just says a person is a user, this is all they see. They will not see the teacher home. They will see the account. So if I went into my account, you would see details here and I can add myself to another group. So it might be that your students want to be in two separate groups, perhaps looking at two separate areas of the curriculum. One might just be PSHE group, just looking at eSafety, and one might be a coding group, perhaps an advanced coding group, so you might want to be going on a different part of the curriculum for them. So if we now head back to pupil view, we'll see that the pupil view for the teachers sees all the stages. So if I go into device management, there's a little bit of an introduction here, and then we'll be able to see that the using my device is now available. Software fundamental has presentations, word processing, basic email and image manipulation. Cybersecurity has the internet and coding has code.org, Python and web design. You notice that I don't see all of the stages because I've turned some of them off in the curriculum. If you want to turn them back on, obviously go back to teacher home, find the group that was pupil that you're in and amend your curriculum. However, this does bring us on to some of the marking technology and how some of the course works. So if I go to software fundamentals to, to begin with, You'll see here that the students have a marking engine that they can download. They have some exercise files that they can download and a task booklet. So when they click on the task booklet, it will open and they can look at the tasks here, which will tell them to use some of the exercise files and then mark it using the marking engine. If they get stuck with the task, they can click on a video. This will open the YouTube video and the assessment type is here, marking engine tells us that this will be marked using the downloading marking engine. Some a teacher assessed, and that will be for you to assess what they've achieved. And some will be click the test, where they can paste in a module or upload a file. Um, we can see that in action if we go to the coding here, and say we go to sequences, we can click the test. Here's the answer if I to that Python test, this was a very difficult one. And if I submit the code, it says, well done, you've done that. Now, if I return to the unit, we'll see that Python sequences has now been completed for this user. And if we go back to the teacher homepage, class progress, the teacher is actually in this group, John Newman, and you can see that the coding, Python, the task is now ticked. So you can see that you get a really good overview of all that the pupils are doing. One other thing to explore is the concept of coursework. So if you go to coursework, you can click on upload here, and then they put in a title, a hyperlink to say a OneDrive or a Google document that only you have access to, put in the subject, possibly the teacher of that subject, some nice description notes, and then crucially, they select the skills that they've used in that piece of work. It's not necessary to have all the skills used, but we like to see three or four per piece of work. If I've added the coursework, it will become available for the teacher. The teacher can add a comment and grade as well. So in its essence, this is generally how the Learn Informatics course is run. And it's vital to get some students signed up and signed in and for you to set up some groups to see how the course goes. Have fun.